I just want to start this video by thanking the Dallas Cowboys for constantly letting the Eagles right back in the NFC East. And so with that being said, today we got the Eagles versus the Dolphins preview and why the Eagles must win this game, should win this game, but can't take it too lightly. We got the Eagles. We got the Sixers. Philly talk. What's going on, everybody? Philly Mike here. And if you're new to the channel, support the Eagles or the Sixers, I'm going to need you to hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. And all the support you guys give Philly Talk. Let's get down to business, though. So before I get into my Eagles and Dolphins preview, let's talk about this breaking news. Lane Johnson signs a four-year extension with the Philadelphia Eagles, I think, is a good extension. It is for $72 million for four years. $54.595 million guaranteed. That is the largest guaranteed contract. And if you ask me, I love the signing. We all saw last week with no Brandon Brooks and no Lane Johnson, the offensive line struggled so bad in the run block, in the pass block. Carson Wentz couldn't get much done. So why not sure up best right guard, best right tackle, sign him for the foreseeable future to really help Carson Wentz development. But let's get to the Dolphins and Eagles preview. We're going to start with the Dolphins offense and defense and total offense and points per game. Let's check it out. The Dolphins only average 14.8 points per game, which is very low. When it comes to passing yards per game, they only allow, they only average 201.7 yards per game passing. And this is extremely low. They only rush for 63.2 yards a game. Extremely low. Our defense should really be able to pin our ears back and go after the pass. Look what their defense is allowing offenses to do. Our offense has been struggling and this is the game to come out the struggling funk. They allow 31.5 points per game. That is extremely high. Passing yards per game, 252.7 passing yards and rushing 148.2. So we really should do whatever we want via the pass, via the run. Total yards they allow on them is 400.9 yards of total offense. So there's no excuses why we can't get our struggling offense to come alive. Let's talk about some things on defense the Philadelphia Eagles should do and watch out for. Now, the Eagles defense has been playing lights out. One, Cravion LeBlanc has been activated, so we should be seeing him very soon. If not this game, definitely next week. But the pass rush has been coming alive. Uh, the secondary has been coming alive. Through the month of November, the secondary has been allowing quarterbacks on average to complete only 53.6% of their passes. That is number one in the NFL through four games. Via, we got these guys back. And we've been only allowing quarter, uh, teams to score 17 points on us. That is very good. We got a struggling team coming in, 2-9, and nine, but it's a dangerous 2-9 and nine team because they got nothing to lose. When a team has nothing to lose, that's when you see trick plays, uh, fake punts, fake field goals, all the stuff you're not prepared for. So the Eagles got to keep their eyes open and watch for that stuff. Plus, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Now, he's a journeyman that's been in the league for a long time. But there's two different Ryan Fitzpatricks. You got Ryan Fitzpatrick who can easily come out and throw four interceptions. Or you got Ryan Fitzmagic, who can come out and stretch your team and throw four touchdowns. It's simple as that. It's no medium for Ryan Fitzpatrick. It's either good or bad. He's been doing it for a while. We played him last year against Tampa, and he shredded our team. At the end of the day, Jim Schwartz got to keep mixing it up with stunts in the middle and different packages. I like how he's playing more cover one man. We've been striving in it. I like how he's using Ronnie McLeod to come down in the box a little bit more and play against safety. I mean, like play against tight ends and do different things than just being in a post safety position, playing a deep ball. We're really mixing it up, moving pieces around. We're playing a lot of three safety uh, dimes. I like it. I like it. We got to keep that up. The defense has been playing lights out. Now let's switch it over to the offensive side of the ball. Carson Wentz is going to have a whole different offense around him. He's going to have his two right uh, linemen back and Brooks and Johnson. He's going to have Alshon back. He's going to have J.J. Ortega Whiteside on the outside. And he's going to have Greg Ward Jr. in the slot. Nelson Aguilar should not see the field unless it's to take Greg Ward Jr.'s spot when he's tired or doesn't know the play because he's still new to the playbook. That's the only time Nelson should see the, the field. 
Jay Ajayi should run hard with extra motivation going against his former team in the Miami Dolphins. Now, like I said, they allow 250 in the air and 150 on the ground. So it's going to be important, even though we want to get Carson Wentz back on track, we can't just force him to throw the ball 45 times. I believe against this defense, he can do it with some of the reliable targets and Alshon and Whiteside and Ward and a actual offensive line that blocks. But there's no reason for it. The Eagles are at their best when we are balanced football team. Run, pass, pass, run. Play action feeds off that. The RPO feeds off that. Defense is respect us. And Carson Wentz has more room to make his make moves. Um, so we got to run the ball a fair amount. I want to see Carson Wentz throw the ball between 28 and 32 times. And we run the ball between 25 and 30 times as well. A mixture. Not just one ball carrier. That's what we are missing, though. We are a different team when Jordan Howard's here because he is that man who can take 20 carries up the middle and get strong, tough yards and really tire out that defense's front seven. Um, Miles Sanders in the splash plays, mixed in with Jay Ajayi, running the ball up the middle because of no Jordan Howard. I do want to touch on this. Carson Wentz got to come out and hit quick early throws to start the game for the simple fact it will build his confidence up because he was missing some easy throws so he has to make these easy throws it's going to lead to better things it's going to also help people like Ward and Whiteside who need to get their catches for 5-10 yards and get their confidence up Zach Ertz playing is big Doug Peterson alluded to he's probably going to play it's big um, if you look on Miami's defense, they got a guy who used to play for the Eagles and Eric Rowe. He used to be a cornerback for us. He's a safety for them now. And when in 11 personnel, he comes down to D the tight end. So if it's Goddard, if it's Zach Ertz, that's a matchup that we should exploit all day. Eric Rowe cannot cover neither of these tight ends. And we also want to do some two runner back sets. I believe having two runner back sets, some motions will let Carson Wentz identify the defense easier and we should be able to shred him. Now, this defense is not good, but we don't need to put all the thing. We don't need to be dropping Carson Wentz back 45 times. We want to get a nice run and pass mix, play action, RPO. Let Carson Wentz, let the game come to Carson. Don't force nothing. But I do expect a big back bounce back game from Carson Wentz. I thought he was going to do it against Seattle, but again, he had nobody there. But I do think he's going to do it against Miami. At the end of the day, we got to play our game and win the ball game. Simple and plain. Um, at this point, you can't take anything lightly. Like I said, two and nine, it doesn't matter. Sometimes when they play for nothing, they just go out there and do something. And like I said, Carson needs to get his mind right. He has been struggling, but he's our guy for the future. And I believe we're going to put him in better positions. Now, we've been struggling and we have not been able to go deep at all. I'm not saying go deep. I'm not saying throw a deep ball, but we can design plays and schemes to try to catch the ball to get more than just methodically going down the field. You just can't do that all the time. You're not always going to have an 80 yard, eight minute drive. So we need to get screens and small passes that are not deep passes, but are schemed out to catch the ball with a lot of room to run and get that yak, that yard after the catch. Because we don't got a guy who just can beat you down the field. But we got to take shots. That what opens up the defense. At the end of the day, the Eagles should get this W. It's important that we take it serious and win. I don't just want to beat the Miami Dolphins. I want to prove the point. I want our offense to have a coming out party. So here it comes down to the prediction. I got the Philadelphia Eagles winning 28-13. to Yes, the defense stands out. Ryan Fitzpatrick throws some picks. We get some short fields. Carson Wentz capitalized on it. They run the ball, pass the ball, and we win 28-13. Let me know what you think about that. Definitely in the comment section. Tell me what you think the score is going to be. I love hearing from you guys. Let me know what the score is going to be, and let me know what the key, what your key to victory is. What do you think the Eagles need to do on offense or defense to get this W over 2-9 Miami Dolphins? At the end of the day, like this video, share this video. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. And like I said... Uh, let me know in the comments what the score is going to be. We out.